the vast majority of, of the patients, I think it was in the 70% had mm. a reduction in their tinnitus. Mm. I'll say there, there's a pretty good chance that you're either going to see your tinnitus kind of is ameliorated or it, or it goes away completely. How does a consultation go? So we'll go over what a cochlear implant is, how it works, what they look like, sort of some expectations on what it's going to sound like, what the surgery is like. It's up to a year that mm. people have to wear the implant, all waking hours to get used to the sound. Um, so it's a lot of talking about the expectations to have mm. um, the work that's going to be involved. And then if, if tinnitus is a factor, I'll kind of go over, again, that, that mechanism that we think that tinnitus can happen when the brain isn't getting as much sound or as auditory stimulation as it would like to. And a cochlear implant is, is one way of restoring that. So a, a lot of people too with single-sided deafness or you know severe to profound si um, hearing loss on one side, specifically with them I'll say there, there's a pretty good chance that you're either gonna see your tinnitus kind of is ameliorated or it, or it goes away completely. That being said, we can't ever guarantee that you know someone's gonna have no tinnitus after a cochlear implant surgery. And with that too, I think also talking about how the stimulation of the cochlear implant only happens when the processor is being worn. So if somebody has tinnitus that's debilitating in terms of their sleep quality, oftentimes you're not wearing your cochlear implant processor to bed. So that might be something we still have to work on through through a different means mm. other than a cochlear implant. Thank you. So how does the surgery go? if someone decides they want to get this thing and that yeah. it might help their tinnitus. So there's a incision kind of behind the ear that the surgeon makes and then they kind of cut through the bone a little bit back here and then that kind of there's there's an opening then in the, the middle ear space they call it and then they can visualize the cochlea or the inner ear the organ of hearing and they take the electrode that's the internal part of the cochlear implant mm -hmm and they kind of insert it into that curly Q shape. And then there's the, that electrode part is connected to a little receiver that just sits underneath the skin. Mm. There's a little flap there. They stitch it back up. It usually takes like one to two hours per ear. So if somebody's getting a cochlear implant on both sides, obviously that would take longer, but mm -hmm. it's outpatient. So most times people can, can go home the same day. Yeah. But then they would have, you know, the, the site has to heal a little bit before they can get the processor and get it turned on. How can a cochlear implant treat tinnitus? Like what successful cases have you seen where the cochlear implant leads to significant tinnitus relief or treatment? Yeah, so there's this questionnaire that I've used a lot in the past and we use here called the tinnitus handicap inventory. But basically patients report how bothersome their tinnitus is to them in various situations and they get a score if their handicap is considered mild, moderate, severe, et cetera. So there's been a lot of research and I've just seen in my own experience that, you know, we, we give people that questionnaire when they come in to just talk about cochlear implants and see if they're mm -hmm. a candidate. And then we'll give it to them, you know, one month after having a cochlear implant, three months after, six months after, and then a year after having it. And the, the consensus is generally that people see a, a pretty dramatic reduction in mm -hmm. their their level of handicap, so the tinnitus mm. isn't as bothersome, especially for those those patients who have one normal or mild hearing loss ear and then one ear with a profound hearing loss and a cochlear implant. One of my old supervisors, actually, her name's Jordan Holder, she did a st study on patients with single-sided deafness and 45% of them had their tinnitus completely go away when wearing mm. their cochlear implant. And the vast majority of, of the patients, I think it was in the 70%, had mm. a reduction in their tinnitus. Mm. And, mm. I don't think anybody had their tinnitus get worse, mm. um, maybe immediately after surgery, mm. but. Yeah, one thing that we know with tinnitus is that for those who have hearing loss as well, the hearing aids can have mm -hmm. such an important effect in the treatment of the tinnitus. Right. And the cochlear implant exists because some hearing loss is so severe that the hearing aid has limitations. Right. And that's when the cochlear implant can treat the hearing loss mm -hmm. and often when there's more stimulation, more sound coming in through the system, then the tinnitus can significantly reduce. What advice would you have to someone who's considering a cochlear implant when they have primarily a tinnitus problem? Yeah, I, w I would still say you have to be a candidate in terms of your, of your speech recognition as well too. So um, if somebody has normal hearing and really bad tinnitus, we wouldn't want to mm. do a cochlear implant for them. That you know, cochlear implants are designed for, for speech recognition improvement. So I wouldn't completely base the decision off of the tinnitus and the amount they struggle with tinnitus. 
That being said, if somebody is a cochlear implant, you know, getting 30% of speech they can understand and they have significant debilitation or handicap with tinnitus, I would say we definitely expect this, this would help with that. Most people will see a, their tinnitus bothers them less after getting a cochlear implant. Mm. And what is the cost of a cochlear implant, generally speaking? So typically, without insurance, a, a cochlear implant would cost tens of thousands of dollars even. I think that doesn't even include the surgery, because you have mm. to pay for the surgery and then the processor and the implant. So very, very expensive. Most insurances do cover it if somebody's a candidate. Often, they need proof from the audiologist that they underwent an evaluation and everything and that they're a candidate and they have to meet with the surgeon beforehand who um, would do imaging as well to make sure that they have a hearing nerve because that's kind of the point of stimulation for the cochlear implant. So usually insurances just need proof that the audiologist and the surgeon want that and then it's it's usually covered. With those patients who have single-sided deafness, Medicare and Medicaid can, can often not cover it, um, which is unfortunate. Hopefully in the, in the future that changes, but mm. it would it would not be covered usually if somebody has a normal hearing ear yeah. on one side. Absolutely. And for someone with bothersome tinnitus mm -hmm. who is a candidate for a cochlear implant and they're looking for something that can help them and maybe they've tried multiple other treatments and are still looking for help, what kind of advice or what message would you share to them? If somebody has really bothersome tinnitus and they're a candidate for a cochlear implant, Maybe they've tried a hearing aid that's programmed appropriately. They've tried it for a while. They're not getting a benefit in terms of their speech recognition. Their tinnitus is still really bad. I would definitely say this is a, a viable option for them to try. And we expect that their speech recognition would improve and that their, their tinnitus would, you know, be less severe and, and less bothersome to them. Just because it, it's the only way some people you know, will try a cross hearing aid system where um, if they don't hear well on one ear, kind of the signals on that side are sent to the other ear, but that's not directly stimulating that ear. So especially for those people with single-sided deafness, I would say it's definitely worth a shot. And we expect that you're gonna do better in terms of C-Trek and your tinnitus. So. Amazing, All show right. them what you do. So we're gonna come in here. This is one of our booths where we test patients to see if mm -hmm. they're a candidate for cochlear implants. Yep. We'd also have hearing aids appropriately programmed for you according to a recent hearing test. And your prescription and everything just to make sure that we're optimizing your hearing for the testing um, and then coming out of this speaker would be various words so a common one we do is called cnc words where a man's voice is saying ready june or ready duck and the patient is trying to repeat back those words awesome anything else cool happen in this room we can do it in noise testing too so we use both speakers where there's kind of like a bunch of people mm -hmm. talking like you're mm -hmm. in a busy restaurant mm -hmm. trying to listen to one person so people Great. listen to that too but Great. all out of the speakers awesome yeah. All right, so we go to the next room? Yeah, let's do, do it. it. So then in here is usually where we kind of sit down and then have a conversation about if the patient is a cochlear implant candidate. Mm -hmm. So if we think that they'll do better with a cochlear implant than they would with a pair of optimized hearing aids. Mm -hmm. So we kind of go over everything, how it works, wow. what's different about it compared to a hearing aid, yeah. what the surgery is like, things like that. There are three main companies that make cochlear implants and we work with all of them here. There are two parts to every cochlear implant, the internal part and then the external part. So an internal would look something like this. So this is the part, and you can see here too on this diagram, this kind of sits underneath the skin here. And mm. then there's this tiny little curly cue, it, yeah. it's really hard to see. That's the actual implant. And on a real one, that would have the little electrode contacts. So, you know, normal hearing, we hear through our external ear, through the ear canal, yeah. the eardrum, three little bones behind your ear, and then this curly cue here is called the cochlea, or the organ of hearing. With somebody who's a cochlear implant candidate, that's where all the damage is. So this tiny little curly cue kind of takes the place of that organ. Um, and instead of acoustic energy, we're using tiny bits of electricity to stimulate the hearing nerve, which then goes up to the brain and we perceive as sound. Mm. This is one example of an internal part that would sit kind of like this into that little curly cue wow. there. And when when just the implant is in, the, the patient won't experience any sound. You need the processor or the external part connected to it to perceive sound. So 
They're connected through a magnet here. And then it kind of looks like a hearing aid, the external processor. It has a battery attached. So this is the battery. This is the processor. When they connect on a real one, you'd see a light come up here that just tells us we have good connection with the, the internal piece. Um, and that's when the patient would hear. It is quite different from a hearing aid, even though they look pretty yeah. similar. Um, there's a lot more of an adjustment period. Definitely. Usually when we first turn them on, people can just kind of hear sounds or noises. Sometimes we'll hear it sounds like Mickey Mouse, Darth Vader, things like that. Um, it can take up to a year to get fully used to the sound. Yeah. So this part hangs on the ear and then this would connect to a magnet right there on top of the head. Wow. Yeah, and then also now two of the three companies have a kind of an all-in-one. Mm -hmm. So instead of, you know, this piece that connects to the mm -hmm. magnet and then the mm -hmm. processor connected mm -hmm. by this cable, it's all in one piece, which yeah. is nice for patients who have like retention issues or anything like that, or um, dexter dexterity mm -hmm. issues. Guys, thanks for watching. Right here on the screen, you'll see an option to schedule a consultation with a member of Treble Health. We're here to help. Don't hesitate, reach out. Any question is welcome. We're here to make sure that you get all the tools and resources to help you improve your tinnitus. Take care.